One of the strangest anomalies regarding the past is the movement and development of human culture. At strange locations on our planet, we are confronted with human habitation in an advanced setting that our current climate suggests shouldn't be there. It does show us that we are missing something, and although our world's weather could have been altered at these locations during the shifting of the poles, the timeline for such dramatic climate changes does not meet the same timeline of what we are educated to believe in an involving setting of human culture. And this shows us overwhelmingly that human beings did exist much sooner in these advanced settings before the climate made these locations difficult to live in. From Easter Island to Japan and even the most remote Scottish islands, advancements in technology are present that shows us that ancient earthlings did once exist in a thriving society that has since withered to a state of assimilation. Why exactly they exist in remote locations can be answered by the cataclysmic events that triggered Earth cycles that led to flooding and volcanic displacement on a scale that saw life on Earth reduced to a survival state they were only now recovering from. Perhaps sites like Orkney and Easter Island was simply the higher ground that our people had no option but to occupy as we waited for the waters to recede and the Earth to settle. Wait till you hear this. Right around 5,000 years ago on the most remote parts of the British Isles in Northern Scotland on the island archipelago of Orkney, a civilization existed here that are completely out of place for the time but showed dramatic advancements that are only matched by the Mediterranean nations including Egypt for this period. This is an area of the world just short of where the ancient Greeks described the Hyperboreans, which is thought to be where the Faroe Islands are located today. This word Pharaoh is derived from the Norse word for sheep and not to be confused with the Egyptian word for the royal ruler, though such a designation for a Pharaoh of Egypt to have vacationed here is not out of the question as the Egyptians and Greeks were obsessed with ancient Britain and traded with Cornwall for tin ores to make alloy for weapons like swords. This eventually saw the Romans invade the British Isles for the same resources that are still available to this day. It is unclear how this culture emerged on Orkney, but what is clear is their advancements and the fact that the advancements would have been developed through the course of time further points to the fact that the settlers here may have come from somewhere else. And in fact, structures in part of the Golan Heights in Israel do resemble the structures found on Orkney, suggesting there probably is a connection between the two regions, possible because of cataclysmic displacement of people, and this latest discovery on the Scottish archipelago may shed some light on who these people were, as the oldest piece of cloth ever discovered in Scotland has just been revealed. Though the actual cloth has not existed the 5,000 years of time that has elapsed since this artifact is thought to have been woven, what has remained is the very imprint that it generated into the clay of a pot that it was wrapped around after it was torn from the potter's clothing as the vessel was made. And this trap fibers that have been dated to 5,000 years old according to researchers in the Highlands. The latest discovery came during a project started in 2019 at the Archaeology Institute of the University of the Highlands and Islands. It set out to closely examine impressions left on the surface of fragments known as sherds of grooved ware pottery unearthed at the Ness. The project uses Reflectance Transformation Imaging RTI a technique that employs a photograph rig to take multiple photos of a subject, each with a different angled light source. These pictures are combined using computer software to create a highly detailed digital image of the surface of an object that can be examined from all angles and examined on screen, with the results revealing details not visible during normal examination. Analysis found the impressions of a cord cloth on two co-joining sherds of pottery. The impressions appear on the inner face of the vessel, suggesting they were made by the potter's clothing while the pot was being created. The impression of the cord was discovered by Lorraine Clay, amusingly enough, 
one of the Ness Post Excavation volunteers, and analysis using the RTI confirmed the identification. To date, there is only one other piece of evidence suggesting the use of woven textile in Neolithic Scotland, another clay imprint discovered in 1966 in Dumfries and Galloway. Nick Carr, the director on the site, said in a recent interview on the discovery that there is no evidence of textile tools available in Neolithic Orkney, suggesting textiles were made by hand or using tools made with organic materials that have not survived in the archaeological record. This lack of material culture around textile production can help us to infer what techniques they may have been using. It is now believed that the people of Ness of Brodgar used coil mats in the construction of clay vessels, given the number of pieces of broken pot base which carry the impressions of basketry. Spiral mats may have been placed under the pot as it was being formed to ease it as it turned, it is believed. The new discoveries have come to light as part of projects started last year by the Archaeology Institute of the University of the Highlands and Islands by Jan Blatchford and Roy Towers. They used reflectance transformation imaging, a technique that merges multiple photographs taken using various angles of light source, to create a highly detailed digital image of an object's surface. The results reveal surface details not visible during normal examination, with work continuing to document and interpret these impressions, which, it is hoped, will provide an invaluable insight into the fiber technology of the Neolithic period and how these people came to thrive on such a remote part of the world. And it was probably after the last cataclysmic occurrence that saw our kind struggle to survive in these locations that seem very remote to us today. Well. We know there is a reason for this, and we intend to bring every little snippet of lost history to our subscribers that we think is part of the bigger yet lost part of the understanding of the past. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.